But uh, until then, we're going to talk a little bit of NBA, and we want you to weigh in uh, in about 15, 20 minutes or so. But, Rob, um, the CBA, the, either side, the players or the owners, can opt out of this CBA on December 15th. So the sides are talking, trying to, uh, you know, avoid a future lockout or strike or whatever. And um, one of the things that they're talking about that both sides reportedly seem to be in on is dropping the age eligibility rule or requirement from 19 years to 18 years. So the 19-year age requirement made high school players have to wait a year until after their high school graduation to be available for the draft. This would enable them to come right out of high school. And um, obviously this wouldn't be the first time. We've seen it a few times. And um, Rob, I, I'm i with it. I'm fine with it. Um, many of the greatest players in the history of the game came straight out of high school. Not just LeBron James. LeBron James. Kevin Garnett. Tracy McGrady, Moses, Moses Malone. Malone, yes, who went to the ABA. Uh, all of them are Hall of Famers, and all of them were tremendous players. Now, everybody hasn't made it. Sebastian Telfair didn't have much of a career. There's a few others. Uh, Jermaine O'Neal had a nice career, but injuries kind of cut that short. Um, Jonathan Bender didn't do much. So it's not foolproof. Everybody that comes out won't be great. But, hey, you live with that. They're 18 years old. They're an adult. They can make their own decisions. And uh, I'm fine with it, Rob. Uh, Where are you at on this? I thought this was one of the biggest mistakes that David Stern made in his uh, commissioner career. I I, I thought there was no justification for it. It was one of the worst things, Chris, in professional sports. Kids go from high school to the minor leagues making professional baseball money. People go, tennis players, 14 years old. Michelle Wee, 16, when she's broke into golf. The point is, at 18, you don't hold back a prodigy. If someone is a prodigy... At 10 years old and they can read a movie script or they can perform on a stage or play the piano at Carnegie Hall, nobody holds them back. If they're not good enough, Chris, at 18, don't draft them. But the, but the idea that we could go to war, you could go, we could send you to a foreign country, you could do all these other things, but you can't play basketball at 18, that somehow somebody came up with a magical number of 19 uh, what what was that? Well, it's just what a was year the after. Yeah, it's a year after they. No, but but house. it but it didn't make any sense, is what I'm saying. Because at 18 years old, you're going to go out and get a job. If he's talented and somebody wants to take a chance on him, what what's what what would what is the number? I never could ex- understand. Other than they were trying to make kids go to college, like force them to like you can't right. just come from high school that you got to go That's to college what it was. for a year. Right. That's really what it was, Chris. And I had a fundamental issue with it because, and then they say, well, the kids aren't ready. You know, the kids aren't ready. They shouldn't be going in the pro. That's not on the kids. That's on the general managers and the owners who decided to go out because they were trying to get the next Kobe Bryant, right? Or they were trying to get the next LeBron James. That's on them. They've made mistakes, but the kids should have a right to earn a living and get a job after they finish high school. That, well, that's, and, I, and, and, and that was the thing. They always said, well, they need the socialization of college. LeBron James has been a model. Just like, fine, Chris. Just fine. Tracy McGrady was fine. Jermaine O'Neal was fine. Uh, Kevin Garnett was fine. I mean, these are some of the best citizens the league has seen. That's and what Charles I'm Barkley, who I'm not saying he's a bad citizen, but he did throw somebody through a window. He did spit on a fan. No, he went to college. There Allen was a Iverson didn't on the want to window. practice. He went to, he was he went to, to college. You know what I'm saying? Like you can you can point the guys off. that went to college 
I heard it. It, it, it wasn't that. I'm sorry. It, wasn't it was funny. You yeah. could, Alex couldn't hear it. That's why I didn't get a mm, chuckle. He heard it. But, but anyway, uh, you know, some guys who've gone to college have made big mistakes, and guys that came out of high school didn't. So that's not it. And then, Rob, what always bothered me, and some of these college coaches would say this because obviously they want these great players. But, oh, he needs to get his education. You're, you're keeping kids from getting their education. It's amazing. And then they would put the racial thing. Even if it wasn't stated, sometimes it would be stated, sometimes it wouldn't be. But, you know, these black kids, you know, they can get a college education. First of all, they're not staying four years. Secondly, you're worried about the black kid who, who's not a great athlete, who graduates no, from high no. school, goes to work at McDonald's for the next four years. You worried about him? You, you, you all hung up on getting him his education because he doesn't run a 4-3 or jump 40 inches off the ground. <laughs> so it was hypocrisy on so many levels, Rob. Um, and so, That's why I couldn't yeah, get look, with it, Chris. Were, it never and, felt good. It never felt good to me. And, Rob, there were some players, and I look, I, they're, everybody's they're trying to protect themselves, but some veteran players, Rob, who it wasn't just the league. There were some veteran players in the league with the Players Association who were like, I'm 35 years old. I'm way better than this 18-year-old kid right out of high school, but they're cutting me and keeping a guy who can't play as well as I can yet because, you know, they, they want to keep him for the future. And so there was some of that as well. Players, veteran players saying they were losing jobs to these young kids who who aren't as good as them. They don't mind. You lose a job to LeBron, Kobe, fine. But they were losing jobs to some of these other kids who weren't as good. But it is what it is. But, uh, yeah, Rob, I, I'm fine with it overall. And um, it looks like both sides are for this. And, um, look, I, I what they need to do, Rob, is for the kids that aren't that good. And I think this will be something they're able to do. They can go to the G League. Right? So a, a kid who wasn't ready still can go to the G League and make some money. And maybe in a, a year or two, he will be ready. He can develop. And so that was always the problem to me was that if a kid, because there will, Rob, be some kids who think they're good enough, and they yeah, aren't. But, and but, but let me when say they this. went, I, I if wanna... they went straight, well, hold on, let me finish. If they went to the draft and were a, was a second-round pick, no guaranteed money, didn't make the team, they were, in, they were done. They couldn't go back to college and play. They Maybe they never get to the NBA. They were done. Now, if they can go play in the G League, then maybe they can, even if they don't get back to the NBA, they can make some money as a G Leaguer. So I think that I like that. Hopefully, I, and I can't imagine that won't be a part of the process. Uh, this, this is my issue whenever I heard that, is people have a right to try things and fail. Like, they have a right to believe in themselves, go out there and, and, and make an attempt, at something. But didn't Shaq's son, Shaq was upset that his son, what did he do, Chris? He came out, right, for the draft, wasn't drafted. I think him and Shaq, right, were at odds over, over him coming out of school. I don't remember to, the exact be, details. Yeah, yeah but he, would, he, he wasn't drafted. He, he came out, and, and, and I think Shaq didn't want him to come out and enter the draft, but he did it anyway. But my point is. I think he got picked up, but Lakers picked him up, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, but not nah, he wasn't drafted. Like, he was uh, – Signed as, you know, after the draft was over. But my point, right. I guess, is people have a right to, to attempt what they want. It didn't mean their life is over. If they don't get drafted or they don't make the NBA, you know what you have to do? You have to go out and get a job like everybody else, like everybody else who played uh, college sports, who didn't make it to the pros, or who played on their high school team. You know, you give it a shot, Chris. If it doesn't work out, you go get a job. So I just think... The bottom line to me was like the NBA, this is just my personal feelings. We're in cahoots with college basketball. They were trying to stop this thing from kids like just going straight to high school and, and trying to force them to go to college 
and, and play – at least the, so that the colleges could get a year out of them. I really believe that. Well, they had the, the NBA, Rob, had a tremendous, and still has at this point, a tremendous, uh, what's the word, feeder system, right? These kids would become household names in college, and by the time they get to the NBA, everybody knows who Zion Williamson is. Ja Morant, right? That was great for the NBA. We don't have to pay them. It's not a minor league system where we got to take care of them and pay them money and benefits and so on and so forth, health care. They are getting their name out there on another platform so when they come to our league, they help make it more popular. And so I agree. I think they were in cahoots with college. My issue, though, I obviously people have a right to try and fail. But I don't like a kid, the, a kid who's 18, graduates from high school, and is a great player, just not quite good enough or ready for the NBA. The old rules, he was virtually done. I mean, he could try every other year later to get on a summer league squad and work out on his own, but he had no platform to showcase his skills. And so a lot of scouts just would not see him. You would eventually, you would essentially be putting like a death knell to his dreams of playing in the pros. And that's fine for a guy like me who wasn't good enough in high school. Yeah, I played high school and that was it. I mean, other than college, you know, D3, but I was done. Most high school players, that's going to be the situation. But if a kid actually has legitimate NBA potential, I don't think because he prematurely entered the draft, didn't get drafted, that his chances of making it should drop tenfold because he can't go to college and play anymore. But now he can go to the G League, if they that's what they do, and develop. And he may never get to the NBA, but at least he's got a shot at 18 and 19 years old. I wouldn't want to crush a, a really good player's chances – just because he made a mistake and, and thought he could get drafted. And that, and and that exactly, and that's, I'm with you. That, that, that's the issue I had, that people take chances sometimes in life, Chris. They don't always work out, but that shouldn't be the end of the, uh, end of, under the dream. Or just, right. Okay, he didn't get drafted. He goes and works. Look at Pat, Pat, Patrick uh, Beverly and, and his um, tour to get into the NBA, right? His route. He had to go right. play all overseas, overseas or whatever, and now he's had a, a, a very good NBA career, right? And has played for a long time. Right, right. What do you think about the NBA letting kids come straight out of high school once again? All right, let's kick it off with uh, Mark. I'm in Mark in Sacramento. You're on The Odd Couple, Fox Sports Radio. What up, Mark? What's going on, gentlemen? What's going What's on, up, gentlemen? Um, <laughs> uh, hey, hey, Chris, real quick on the point. I'm really sad about what happened to Time Lord. You hear about him and his knee? Yeah, for well, four to six yeah, weeks, man, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, they yeah. say that, man. I think it's gonna be longer because he's had problems with it. It's not healing. I, I think mean, it's gonna if be it's, longer. Yeah, if it's if it's serious, then I definitely hate to see it, man. Yeah, and that's I, gonna and hurt Boston. You wonder why I, not get it done earlier in the off season? You know, I guess like you said, they thought it would heal. Um, yeah, yeah. I yeah, say, it, I love it, the kid. He's yeah. he's important for them, man. He's huge, very if much so. Oh, yeah, very much. That's so. a big loss yeah. if he's not available. You're right. Definitely. Uh, uh, real, real quick. Of course, they should allow this, and I agree with you, Rob. In that, I thought David Stern was in cahoots with the NCAA to yep. make sure the kids stayed there because that was his minor league, and he wanted to make sure that they made yep. their money and he yep. made his. And you notice when Isaiah owned the CBA, he didn't do much to try to help Isaiah keep that afloat either, did he? No. Yeah, that was. Uh, I mean, I'm just saying. Did you think about that? So, yeah, I, I just that's what I think of that. Yeah, agreed. And these, of course, they should come with all these young kids coming. Yes, you right. let them come in. It's the only sport stopping them. The only sport that stops them. It doesn't make. I, any I sense. just want them to make it. Uh, obviously, football too. But I wanted them to. I want them to allow them to go to the G League if they're not ready. Yeah, I just say. That's my and, one but thing. but they should just have the opportunity to play. Uh, if if they're good enough, if they're a prodigy. John in Orlando, you're on the Odd Couple Fox Sports Radio. What up, John? Hey guys, thanks for answering my call. I um, yes. tonight you guys are spot on. You touched all the right points. You know all the reasons they were restricting them. 
So I'm, I'm in agreement with that. Um, I just want to make one mention of a classic case, though, of what it used to I think the G League solved all these problems, basically. But I right, think that exactly. there was a yeah, there was a kid, though, that I think you remember he made a movie about him. He was the number one high school player in front of LeBron out of and California? Carmelo. California? He was out of New York, I think. And they had a five star. Oh, camp. Lenny Cook. It, Probably Lenny right. Cook, Rob. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, was, yeah. he, was, my, he outplayed LeBron like at one of the right. five stars or something. He was a right. LeBron. Well, my best well, friend that I grew up with was one of his camp counselors, and he's in that movie telling him that, you know, that you're not going to be a good basketball player unless you're a good person because he didn't want to practice. So that was a yeah. moment to highlight like that. But you guys are right on. This one, congratulations. Well, look, Thank one you, John. thing, Appreciate I don't care if we got any prodigies listening, Rob. I don't care how good you are. If you don't work hard. No, no, you got to work. You're right. not going to maximize that ability. LeBron James, look at him. Spends a million. I know you might not have a million dollars to spend on your body, but the point is LeBron works hard. Michael Jordan worked this tail. Rod, these are the best ever. They I, worked their butts off, regardless of how much physical ability they had. If I could get a coupon to help me work on my body, you know, I would do it in a minute. <laughs> I tell you what, Rod, if I could hire a nutritionist <laughs> right. and a trainer, yeah, I'd be, I'd be in great shape too. No doubt. Tony <laughs> in D.C., you're on the Odd Couple Fox Sports Radio. What up, Tony? Fellas, what's good? What's good? How y'all what's doing? Up, man? Doing Always good, a pleasure. Bro. Um, a couple quick points here. Um, I think you guys are spot on. If you're 18, if you're old enough to die for the country, you're old enough to right. go into the draft. I think you guys are more in tune with the league than I am. I think the NBA makes so much money. You know, just like they have the G League over here, they can start um, leagues overseas because the NBA is global now. Okay, so they've got enough money to send these kids overseas and also get guys like Tracy McGrady, Jermaine O'Neal, LeBron James to come to these symposiums and talk to these kids about what to expect and everything. And um, um, they really got to talk to these kids about finances, you know, because, you know, you're going to have your family coming after you and all that good stuff. And well, they do that yeah. when kids are drafted, regardless of the age, high school, yeah. a couple years of college, whatever. And, they and always have thing, their, their NBA camp. Where they, they they have players, refs, right. coaches, all kinds of stuff. You know, right. they they talk to the kids about all that. Chris, I got a question for you and you yep. too, Rob. Do you think that the culture of AAU ball is giving some of these kids a false sense because they're all on these super teams at AAU ball and they really don't really work on their skills? I guess you could say. Yeah, the but, weaknesses. But, I just said, Tony. I think that that's partly true, but it still comes down to me. To the, to the general managers, Chris, and the people who run the organizations as far as drafting people who aren't ready. Like, I think that if you don't draft those guys, it would change some people's minds. You know what I mean? If, if people aren't drafted, but they still feel like, well, we'll grab him and maybe he'll develop, you know, and maybe he'll do something. And yeah. that's what has made people do, you know, feel more content to do that. I think. Yeah, I think, I mean, I think it's a separate issue, you know, what, what Tony's bringing up. I do think, Rob, I think a challenge for America, and look, look at the NBA, Luka, Embiid, Giannis, those are what, three of the best five players in the world. It, it, they're, they're all from overseas. Our, our athletic programs, and I love it. That's the way you and I grew up, right? You, you play for your school team, your high school and all that. But, the, but those the days are over. We, right, the fact that we're tying sports to academics is, it could become, you know, it can create problems, right? It does create problems. I mean, we've seen it for decades. If a kid wasn't a great student, a lot of times their career was derailed, right? Whereas over in Europe, they're 15 years old. They're specializing in basketball. And they're playing pro at 15. And now a lot of the best players in the world are from that type of system. So it might be something, you know, that we got to look at a little closer. But, you know, that's what you're, we're running up against, Rob, is tying all of well, our sports I, no, to I, academics. I, I you know? agree. I, I get that part. My, my only part, I was just saying, is – you, you can't draft somebody who's not ready and then blame the kid is what I'm saying. Do, do you like, like, nah, you, but it, it, look, it does. You're, you're I drafting hear you somebody, and you're right. You're drafting but I'm somebody, just saying, somebody who's not ready and then say, it, oh, well, this is terrible. The colleges, they don't teach. Then you shouldn't draft a person who's not nah, ready. It, to right. Play but it, it, that's easier said than done. 
it, it makes it tough. I mean, you see a kid. Look at Imani Bates. Now, he may, hopefully his career isn't over, but he was one of the top high school players in the country. If high school schoolers could come right in, you know, a couple years ago, he'd have been a top draft pick. And now his, he went to Memphis, didn't do much. He was going to go to Eastern Michigan, for goodness sake. And now, you know, he just may, may be in some trouble. That His people are saying it. it's a misunderstanding. But he was caught with, you know, a car with an unlicensed weapon. So, you know, it, it it's – we'll see. Um, it's My point is that it is hard to project a high schooler. Um, you're right, ultimately it's on the team, but it's very hard to project how good a kid is going to be as a pro when he's in high school. In most cases, LeBron James was a different story, um, but it's tough. All right.